Hi there, Christian Henson from Spitfire Audio here, answering a question that I get asked a lot, which is how to mix non-orchestral elements into orchestral pieces or vice versa. Often people say, you know, could I talk about how to mix synths into orchestras, but more often than not, guitars. And it just so happens that we've recently released ambient guitars, which for me is like if Spitfire Audio was to do guitars, this is the way we do it. And we have, and it's been about five years in the making. So much so, it's quite rare for one of these tutorials where I can say I've actually used this library probably more than any other non-orchestral library in my entire palette. It's my go-to, must-have, get-out-of-jail card free. I hate using this word, but directors seem to think that these sounds are very cool. I would tend to agree with them too. It's made by a gentleman called Leo Abrahams and we first came out with Enigma which was really his take, his personality on guitars, using guitars in non guitary ways. Then we had a kind of feedback extravaganza with Enigma 2 but now we've packaged it into a single package with a bunch of new really amazing material that we recorded this year. Uh, one of my highlights is this new Peel guitar. Let me just uh, have a little play of that. So it can fit in very much with the modern concept of kind of very minimal Scandi noir kind of stuff. I've just got a bit of Tundra playing here. That's one of my highlights from the masses of new material that Leo has recorded up at the Spitfire HQ earlier this year. So basically, a couple of weeks ago, Oliver and I wrote this. to see if I can take it just that bit further. This isn't going to be Scandi Noir. I've put the world, his wife, and they've brought their kitchen sinks along too. A real fulsome, uh, intense track based on that track that you just saw there. I think the key thing for me with uh, guitars, or indeed anything else that you're adding to an orchestral arrangement, is just to think that they're like another choir or another section of the orchestra, and you simply have to arrange it like you would an orchestral piece. So it's not how having everything running full bandwidth, full whack all the time. It's about giving things time, their space. And my challenge here was to really make the strings and guitars meld. So at points, the, the strings come out of the guitars, the guitars go into the strings. And then sometimes it's, am I listening to guitars or am I listening to strings? Or is it both a kind of combined sound? So let me just take you through bit by bit what I've used here. So everything you see in green is AG, uh, ambient guitars. Everything you see in red is additional stuff, mainly orchestral. I've also just got my favourite EXS sine wave bass there as well. So let's have a listen to these first initial things. So a lot of the original Enigma material has been built into the eDNA engine, which if you haven't used this thing, it's just for tweak heads, it's just unbelievable. We've also, Paul and I made about 160 new presets as well, which are a lot of fun. For me, you know, it could be a synth drone, but there's just an organic, you can hear the electrics there. You can hear the, the kind of metal pickups and stuff. Man Beast. Again, a very unique sound. We've got these anime drops here. This 
So it ranges from VIs to loops to really esoteric stuff like this. And it's actually quite a huge library, about 20 gigabytes. Now this is something you'll hear really mixes in with the overtones of the strings that I add later. A cloud of moss here. Incredible to think that that's made from guitars. Now here's when I start building up some VIs. So this is the peel guitar that we had before and then I'm also combining it with these Trenti plucks. A preset that I designed, Trent Resnery. Got these little tuning differences that gives it this really zeitgeisty sound. And then I'm also combining with these power chords for this middle section. Which is fun. And what I did later on is I filtered out a lot of that bottom end. Again, just clearing some space for the orchestra and the fullness of the arrangement. Just thinking of it like you would an orchestral arrangement. You don't have your, your basses running to full whack with your bassoons and all of that kind of stuff. So just carving out a place. Now, whether that be compositionally with register, which you'll also hear later on, or indeed just a bit of EQ. So perceivably, these guitars will sound in the mix the same as the ones you heard earlier on but they'll just, they won't overwhelm the mix with too much kind of drudgery, dirgy thickness. Also considerably louder. I think it's very important to understand that loudness or fatness is, is as much about relativity as it is about, you know, how round or bottomy something is or, or bitey indeed. So you'll hear there's a huge contrast here, which will make us feel, even though they're playing the same parts, even actually we reduce the bandwidth, that just by pumping it up by maybe, I don't know, 10 dB or something, that there's a sense that we've really gone up another level. Okay, so this is my favorite sound, which is a pad. And then we've got this awesome bass sound, which is, as it says, just absolutely awesome. harks back to something from the 1980s, but wholly wrong. Now, as I mentioned, Evo 2 was this kind of festival of feedback, and we created these Evo grids, which are evolutions, are tones that change over time, and you can randomize what tones are playing at what register. So... Great, again, for kind of contemporary urbane dramas, this kind of British indie sound sits really well over strings, over drama. It has a real kind of intensity to it. And then what I've done is I've actually taken the evos and I've uh, combined them with the tremolo. So let's just have a quick listen to what I've got here. So this is the sound without the tremolo. which is great, and I think that's a kind of a tremolando with a coin. And then what I've done is added in a tremolo. It's a bit of reverb on a bus there. A bit of toppy EQ. Taking a bit of the bottom end out. Just, just a bit of that kind of under stuff. And then I've added a bit more distortion. I do enjoy the logic distortion. So it makes it even trashier. And then my favorite plugin, you're going to be so bored of me using this VAU pitch. And you'll see here that we have some automation here with the tuning, again, to give it that really kind of zeitgeisty sound. And I've matched that with another eighth note Evo. You'll hear those cracks. The thing with AU pitch is uh, when you kind of wake it up, it crackles, which is why I've got these parts playing here, but with the volume all down, that's to kind of waken up the uh, plugin. Talking of the tremolo plugin, I've done something a bit cheeky here. So this is the sound of this feedback section here.
You'll notice I'm working with a lot of reverb. And what I've basically done is I've put the tremolo pedal on and then I alter the speed at the rate at which it runs. So it starts fast, goes slow and then fast again. So it has this effect, which is rather cool. Nice climax there, I've got similar things here in the track. There's these little broken prairie organs, which again with the harmonics of the strings really kind of help us mix the two together. I've used the gate there, but with a real soft volume just to give it a slightly broken, stuttery feel without it feeling glitchy. And here we go with our deep blue pad. Awesome stuff, and this. So that's Leo playing with harmonics. And again, that has a real distinctive sound. It's a very Leo sound, that. Got a bottom end there that you can filter out if you just want that kind of real top because it's kind of playing on its own i like it to have that full bandwidth if it was playing later on i probably should chop some of that top out and this is one of um, leo's amazing loops we've got it going into a bus and actually what i'm doing is delaying this signal before sending it to this rather gargantuan reverb there. And what I do later on is I've actually taken the uh, send to the uh, uh, reverb off and I've added all sorts of overdrive and sub bass to that um, uh, loop to give it a real fatness. And then later on I take it up a notch still with a whole bunch of uh, distortion. So what I've also done with this loop here is to create just a massive kind of sub hit with all sorts of sub bass and uh, pitch treatment. And it basically sounds like this, very dramatic. And the reason why I've got the pitch plug on, I know a lot of engineers who actually tune drums so they're in the same kind of tuning or key as the track. Worth keeping in mind, even things like snares and stuff have a have a pitch to them. A way of finding that out, say for example with a kick drum, is, is to actually kind of artificially pitch it up and then see what note it is when it's more in an audible range and then adjust the tuning so it is complementary with the root note or the fifth, something like that. So this is without. It's difficult to make out that pitch, but when you hear it in the context of the track, it just felt like it was kind of rubbing. So I just put it in symphony to give it a hmm. So a combination of a loop and a very kind of ambient guitar there. So we really are running the full gamut in this library from real straight up VI guitars all the way through loops and ending up on stuff that's not maybe recognizable as guitars. But we've got the whole kind of range here in ambient guitars. OK, moving along to the orchestra. Basically, my big tip with orchestras over kind of full guitar -y modern tracks is one is to find a place for them to play. But two, if you listen to, I don't know, a lot of disco records, a lot of pop records that use strings, often it'll just be violins on the top. So they're not going to try and compete with the, the kind of drums and the bass, this, that and the other. So you'll hear, for example, down here that I've used some cellos and basses there, but they really get out of the way when these massive basses come in. So it's about carving a little um, kind of pathway. Uh, conversely, you'll hear as the arrangement builds, the only place we can really hear the strings, certainly this kind of melodic content, is up in the gods. So you can see it ascending up there. But let's just go through it one by one. OK, so we start down here with uh, some of the Tundra, which is our uh, amazing orchestral library recording, the Hall, but 
doing really seriously quiet stuff. And this is called Colenio Tratto, which is bowing the string with the back of the bow, the wooden bit. So there's actually very little traction on the strings. It makes very, very little noise. So it's quite an extraordinary, intense sound. And one of the reasons I wanted to use this is because I saw it on a Star Wars trailer, the one for the, the, the film that's coming out later this year. At the very beginning of that trailer, I think they're using this sound, and I was just blown away that uh, something that uh, Paul and I came up with is, is, is part of the kind of Star Wars universe now. Um, absolutely a, re a really proud moment. So we've got that stuff there, and then I'm doing some uh, kind of Inception-style brass. It's also worth mentioning when treating orchestras and kind of non-orchestral non-organic or electronic material together is is I think being kind of puritanical about the orchestral material is is a, a, a fool's errand so you'll see say for example on on these that I put a, a stereo delay on so let's just have a quick listen to those What I find within dense tracks, reverbs, it, it, they tend to get sucked away and things become dry even though they're really wet. And delays give a sense, or I think a psychological sense of epic scale. It's so loud, it's echoing about the place. And you'll hear here, further down the line, that I've got some slightly more raspy brass that joins it. So let's hear those together. but I'm only delaying the slightly more mellow brass. So there's a, there's a proper die off there, but it sounds expansive. So we've got our Caleno Trato, and then I've used a combination of these Tundra Flautandos, which are not legato. So they, uh, you, basically they're polyphonic. But what you get is a little bit of sucking between the notes. So I've used this chamber strings selection of four sections playing consordino, so with the mutes on, a really kind of exaggerated portamento. And what you'll see here, if we just look at the, the notes there, you'll see that I've actually made these little lumps here in uh, the expression. These are monophonic and they've got these legato, basically there's samples it inserts between the notes. And what I've done is I've just eked these out. So when you combine the two sounds, kind of joins up you don't get that sucking but also I it's quite in a kind of an exotic sound the portamento the sliding between the notes then I had a lot of fun on this section if you recall we have our Evo things doing all of this pitchy stuff <laughs> So I wanted to basically match them with the orchestra and decided to kind of go a little bit systems here. So what I'm using is Evo Grid 3, which is our kind of rhythmic Evo Grid, and you'll see that they're kind of basically pumping away on the string. Something's very difficult to imitate with samples. <laughs> So I'm tuning it with AU pitch and you can hear again that that's doing that funny clicking stuff which is why I've got this over here and it's actually muted off but here's the all of the pitch information there. So we've got that and then we've also got uh, another Evo. Just again, just clearing some room for the rest of the track, I've done a little bit of notching to take some of the slightly boxy sound out. That kind of register. Just making just a slightly more defined sound. And then what I've got accompanying these is a uh, staccato, which is, I believe, is from Albion. I'm favoring the closer mics to keep it tight. got some low staccatos and colenio which is them hitting the strings with the back of the bow and again not being puritanical we've got a delay on here but it's a very kind of muffly delay just again to give it a bit of, of presence we've got some really loud colenios coming on later on and believe it or not i've managed to get some clarinets and flutes into this piece it kind of helps with the intensity so let's have a listen to that So let's have a listen to just the systems elements and then what I'll do is the Evo, the uh, guitars come in here just to see how they work together. Thank you. 
thing to really talk about is we've got see these deep basses here, which are from our symphonic strings range. super fat and finally just to exacerbate this sense of these uh, these these kind of quarter tones I've got a semitone trill but what I've actually done is I've tuned it up so it is actually a, uh, a quarter tone so let's have a again with a little bit of delay on and that's basically it I've Got a mastering bus on the uh, the output. As always, chop the very bottom off, boost the very bottom. Just a little bit of, of, of hazy kind of airy kind of boost on the very top. Compressor, which uh, because I'm really pumping the output bus, it doesn't need much encouragement to just kind of flatten it out, make it a little bit more sausage meaty for me. And I put an L2 Ultra Maximizer on it as well for the sake of kind of staking my claim within the loudness wars. So basic kind of summary is to just think of things that aren't orchestral as part of the orchestra. Make room for them, make room within the orchestra, make room within the guitars themselves. You know, don't fall in love with these sounds, this full bandwidth, if it's not giving any room to anything else. And just at the very end, smash the bejesus out of it. For more information on ambient guitars or indeed any of these libraries mentioned here today, check out the video description down below. Be interested to know if there's any other questions you'd like me to answer in the future. Stick those in the comments below. One of those if you'd like this video is brilliant. If you haven't subscribed yet, lots of fascinating stuff coming up. If you want to be notified the next time we put up a video, ding that bell. See you next time.